Hello, hello, hello. Facebook is coming. Yes. Hello, Facebook. Hello, Instagram. Let me know if you can see me. I believe I'm live now. How oh, how are you doing today? It's Saturday evening, beautiful Saturday evening. And it's time for Parenting Essentials from the Vision Guide. I'm happy to be back and I'm happy to see you, meet you again on Facebook and Instagram. I believe your week was wonderful. All right, before I proceed, please let me know if you can see me and hear me clearly. Facebook, can you see me and hear me clearly? How are you doing today? Let's continue where we started last week. Hello, hello, hello. Let me see who's there. Let me know if you're there. Let me know if you're there. Just say hello to me and let me know if I'm audible. It's very important to me to know. It's very, very important for me to know that I am audible. Very important. All right, Facebook, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, he's here. Instagram, can you hear me? It's presenting essential. Last week, I started a new series, and it's about our teenager. But these things that I'm discussing is applicable to all our children. So don't say, I don't have teenager yet. I don't have teenager yet. My children are still young. Whatever I'm going to teach is going to help you, even with your infant, children. And when they finally get to the teenage stage, you will bring out the knowledge that you have learned over the time. And you'll be able to apply it in your parenting journey all right last week i started about teenagers and i said quite a lot of things and to save time i wouldn't say much so just just go well do well and check the video for last week yeah modu good to see you can you hear me ma'am yeah modu am i audible can you hear me clearly is the video clear enough all right so I started about teenagers last week, but it's something I said towards the end of my session last week, and I'm going to start on that note, which is very important. I talked about the art to art connection that we are trying. We, it's a must for us as parents, as intentional parents, positive parents, a parent who is in an intentional, peaceful parenting journey to have an art to art connection with our children. So that's why I said it's not about teenager only. So if you say, oh, I will come back when they, in the next five years when my children will be teenager, it might be too late because the earlier you start, the better for you. Even if your child is one day old, even if you are still pregnant or if you are, if you are still waiting for the pregnancy. So the earlier you know these things and put them in mind and practice with families and friends, the better for you. All right. So I talked about art to art connection. Yamadu, yeah, are you there? I talk about art, art to art connection, and that was a note I ended off last week. And I gave an, a kind of homework assignment for all the parents that were live. So if you were live, live last week, I said you should pay attention to yourself and you should put effort in creating the art to art connection with your children beyond the tangible things, Beyond what you do to them, like I do this for them, I cook for them, I take them out. I said beyond that, be intentional in the course of the day. That was what I said last week. Be intentional in creating the art-to-art -art connection and track yourself. So my question to you today is, if you were here last week, my question to you today is, what were the efforts you put in place? What were the efforts you put in place in the course of the week to ensure you built, uh, the art to art connection was built. What was the connection you put in place? Anybody that was here last week? Did you do anything? Did you even put any effort? Did you even remember what you said? Put effort and track it and get back to me. Did you? What was the effort you put in place? What were the things you, you did with them that you intentionally you created the art to art connection? If you didn't do that, I want to employ you that this coming week, ensure you do it. And this is going to be one of the questions I'm going to ask next week. I want, if possible, note them down. Note them down. Pay attention to details. Pay attention to yourself as a parent. See everything that was happening in the course of the week. And say, okay, this is what I did. And I was intentional. I wanted to connect to my child. Or I connected to my children. It's very important, please. And I appreciate if you 
do that. All right. So when we create or work on our art to art connection, that means the teenager or our children will feel heard. They will feel seen and they will feel valued. That is basically that the basic meaning. You can be, think, can be thinking you're saying art to art connection. What is this art to art connection, Oye? What do you mean by art to art connection? When you have art to art connection with your children, it means that child or your children, they are feel they feel being seen ah our parents are seeing us they feel heard they feel you're listening when they want to ask questions when they have one and they have a complaint concern they don't just mm. if we talk they won't listen if we don't talk they will complain so that is the way we create the art to art connection not just i bought chocolates i took them for a play date no the child must get to the point of feeling heard seen feeling valued, my parent valued me. Those are the ways you can create this art art connection. Am I audible? Am I audible? Anybody there? Please let me know. All right, so those are the things you're going to be doing. Those are the things you're going to work on to create your art to art connection. I repeat that again. Let them feel heard, let them feel seen, and let them feel valued. So this we eradicate disrespect. If you let your child feel heard, feel seen and valued, automatically disrespect will disappear. Isn't that what we are looking for? That's one of the things we are looking for. We want to raise responsible, respectful children, right? Through our love, don't always, always forget our primary assignment. We can't automatically build a responsible human being or listening ears or uh, responsible, respectful. No. We can only achieve these things through by understanding our primary assignment, which is loving them regardless. That is the only way we can achieve these things. Entity, I cite you there. Thank you for joining, Entity. You said loud, loud and clear. Thank you so much. I was like, okay, I hope I'm being heard. All right, I appreciate that, and I'm so happy to see you, sis. God bless you. God bless you. All right, I'm just, I'm just continuing what I started last week, and I've asked. I don't know if you were here. If you're able to track yourself on the art art connection that I said everyone should do in case you didn't do that please the coming week is another week and i want to employ every intentional parent everyone who is part of parenting essential who is always part of this family so please be intentional in tracking this connection if we to take us to pen down what we did that we said oh this is a, a good one that i did and i was able to create that atmosphere that we connect us heart to heart and I said earlier, in case you're just joining me, anyone that's just joining, that what is the meaning of this art to art connection? Oh, what is this? What is this art to art connection? I paid them, I pay school fees, I do this. And I said, it's beyond that. All these tangible things cannot create the art to art connection. Only when you create an atmosphere that your child, your children, your teenager will feel heard, seen, and valued. And I said, these things are going to eradicate disrespect. Disrespect will disappear. You're on the same page, they don't feel threatened. They don't feel like you are a burden to them. And that is what some of the things I'll be talking about today. Our children should not feel burdened because we have them as children or because they have us as parents. So what advantage is your children having because you are their mother? Do you ever ask yourself this question? So what advantage is your children having are they going to get because you are their father? What, what is the advantage? What, what positive thing you are imparting in their life? That they will be, oh, thank God that's my mother. Thank God I came to this family. Thank God that's my father. This is, should be our consciousness. Not then feeling like, oh, this is mommy and daddy, they are burden. Oh. So we should always be conscious of this thing. So let me continue because I really want to manage time. Last week I, I overused the time and I, I apologize. I don't want to do that today. And I want to see how we can finish this last week if possible also. So one of the things that bring less uh, closeness, because you, most people will complain that when their child gets to the teenage stage, they notice that they begin to withdraw. I talked about withdrawal last week a little bit. They begin to withdraw. They begin to, like, they don't talk to them. Less. They create space. And I'll just say a few things that causes this. One of the reasons why you feel your teenager is, um, is less, is, is, the closeness is less, the uh, harmony, the unity. The, uh, the communication, you're losing it. Or the, the expression of love generally, you can't really see. One of the greatest reasons 
is because you, as a parent, you feel in your head that these children are grown. Oh, what are you talking about? We feel. I don't know, maybe you experienced that uh, growing up. Growing up, there's this experience that we used to have that if somebody is even one month older than you, the mother is expecting you to call and tell her, I don't know, maybe you experienced it. These were the things I had issues growing up, maybe with my brother's friends and everything. They're like, she's rude. He's not calling us auntie. Anyways, I'm not going there today. That's not the point. Let's come back to us as parents. One of the major reasons why you don't feel that closeness again, why you feel your child is giving you gap, why you feel the communication is now becoming less, the general expression of love is going, is because you in your head, you feel my child is grown. I'm going to explain. Just hold on there. You feel your child is grown. Ah, my child is grown now. He's a big girl. He's a big boy. The more you say that is a big girl, that's a big boy. You delete your warmth. You reduce your warmth. And the one like I love you begin to fade away in your home. If you are pretty now or they are still children or infants, I don't know what you're doing in your house. Like in my home, I, don't, I, can't, I can't count how well we say I love you and things like that. It's just, it's not just I love you. We mean it. We are so intentional about expressing the way we love each other. So when you begin to think this children are grown, ah, she's a big girl, because you want to prove a point to your friend, ah, oh God, our mothers, they try there. Eh? Kudos to them. Ah, she's not your mate. She's your auntie. Then you begin to remove the warmth, the I love you statement, the, the, the attention you pay when you talk, because you feel like she can take care of herself, she's a grown person. We're talking about teenagers here. I said something last week, and I've said it in many of my videos, that this set of people are different human beings. They are not adults, even if they are 19. Take it or you leave it. They are still different human beings. And I'll be talking about, hopefully the time will permit me to talk about the stages of their growth today. The moment you want to be intentional and be positive in raising an amazing teenager, you have to understand the stages of their growth. If you don't understand the stages of their growth, it's... It's almost impossible for you to do anything good with them. So, back to my point. You feel in your head they're grown, it's a big boy. You, used to say, you sing the song to their faces. You let them feel, and they, when they begin to show you I've grown, you start to say, well, 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 what are you? And this is it. <laughs> Come on, calm down. You have already expressed it. You push it to them. You let them know you don't have to listen. We don't have to sit together to talk. We don't have to share warmth. We don't have to share, I love you again. Your son cannot cuddle you again. Your son cannot, you know, you already present it to them because you want your now the child to go so that your friend's daughter or son will say, Auntie, oh, please, I'm not coming for the old ones. Let's talk about our life. Let's leave them. They did their best. Let's face our future. Let's face this generation. Let's face those blessings that the God, the Lord has placed in our hands for the next generation. So the love, I love you, begin to fade off. You don't see the reason why you have to tell your 14 years or 15 years again that I love you. Because you feel like that statement is for the little ones. <laughs> yeah? Then you say, my child is now low. My child is now not talking to me. Because you started it. You created that. Uh, you switch your mode in the house to that. You started it. I want to go fast. I believe we get the point. Are we together? Are we still there? Are we together? Facebook, Instagram, are we there? All right. So this is what we show once you start to show less physical affection, this gap begins to create. They begin to move away. They begin to see themselves. Mommy already said, I'm grown. I can see I'm grown. They can see physical features. Some of them at 14 already, they have more starch. They have these. You see some uh, teenagers, girls. Some of them even from preteen. They already have all these features. They are blessed. Right? So don't now push them. Don't give them the idea that is not expected. All right, so never, never give your teen the idea that teenagers can never please their parents. This is one of the things we do also as parents. We always, most parents who have teenagers, they always give the idea to the, to the teenagers or their children that you can never please me. You know why? From your nagging, you nag a lot. You show to them that whatever you do, I cannot be pleased. But because you are not intentional and because you are not doing stop and check, you are not aware. You just feel that child is grown now. Very well. He wants to become rude. She wants to become rude. We just, we just always play the victim. Meanwhile, the child is the victim. 
But as parents, we always like to play the victim. I don't know what's wrong. This is not the child I have. This is not the child I used to have. Point of correction. That is not actually the child that you used to have. Teenage people, teenagers, they are different human beings. That's not, it's not a child. That person is not the child you used to know. So you need to take, get what you need to know, get what you need to you need to connect with this new child if you're struggling. So never say that's not the child I used to know because that's not a child anymore. The child is growing. The only problem here is that you are not growing as parents. And you don't want to accept that this child is growing. I don't want to accept. So never give your team the idea that uh, they cannot please their parents, they can never please their parents. So you're constant and constant nagging. You harass them. You harass them in everything they do. But you don't know it's harassment. Are you going like that? Are you doing this? You just want to impose. You just, you know, your dominion spirit in the name of and the authority is just overwhelming for them. But, ah, what are you saying? We have to watch them. Nobody say you should not watch. Please. I really want everybody who is intentional to listen to me. I'm not saying you don't watch. I'm watching my own. I'm blessed. I'm a mother. I'm talking about you harassing your children unknowingly. And now when we talk about teenagers, these people are different human beings. They'll be tired and overwhelmed. Like, ugh, what is this? You used to spend time to talk, but now they don't have that. They don't feel like talking to you anymore. What do you think happened? Your harassment. Your harassment is too much. And you now become a burden to them. And they can't say to you because they love you as a parent. They know you don't want to hear the truth. So that is why you're here to tell you the truth. So check yourself. Before you start saying, I'm a teenager, you can't tell me anything. These people, they can never listen. They are teenagers. That's why they are teenagers. And also all the made-believe over the time. Made-believe. You have heard it. People have said it. Teenager, they will be real. You can't do anything about it. You have not raised teenager, but you are saying the same thing. How did you know? Because of this statement you have heard and you have believed it. Ah, I cannot raise twins, for example. People will say it's difficult. Have you raised one before? Made believe. We need to delete. We need to rebuild. We need to reset her. The one of the greatest things we can do to ourselves is to believe we know when we don't know. And this is the nature of human. We believe we know when we don't know. All right. Oh, yeah, you are taking time. You said you're not going to be late. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> ah, mommy Pat is here. God will give us what we deserve as parents in Jesus' name. Oh, my mama is here. My mama is here. Thank you so much for joining me, Mama Pat. And Lord, to me. You know I love you. And when I see you here, I just want to ride on that wind of anointing and just, okay, oh, yeah, bro, your mama is here. God bless you, Mama. God bless you. I'm talking about teenagers, and I'm glad you are here. All right. So your constant harassment and things, it man, it pisses them over. They won't be able to tell you because they love you. They love you. All right. So when you make everything about you as parents, that is when no, your harassment, you don't know that it's just about you. Think you're teaching. You're not teaching. You're teaching nothing. Everything is about you. About you. When they dress, when they go to school, when they do this, your statement, you have not rephrased the statement. I've taught that before. Change the phrase. But because you are not ready to be open to learn, everything is about you. When they wear the clothes, Sometimes you even tell them it's too, it's too close. It's too, whatever, whatever they are wearing is too, it's too, it's too close, it's too covered. Just to reveal something. Or you say, it's too revealing. It's too this, this. I'm not saying don't teach them, but don't let it be a burden or harassment. Teach. So, let me let everything be about you. Your teenagers will get tired and they will give up on trying to please you. The moment they are used to your harassment, your constant nagging, they will try, they will keep striving to please. Ah, mommy, we talk. I can't wear this. So it becomes mommy, we talk, but they are not saying to you. Daddy, we complain. Let me try. But if we get to a point when you push them to the wall, because you have not been teaching, they will turn back. And you will say, oh, what happened to my child? My child has changed. No, your child didn't change. Your child was just trying to bear, trying to endure whatever you were doing before. The child did not say to your face that mommy, you were disturbing you are not teaching me anything, but you're just thinking about yourself. So what am I driving at this point is for every parent who is intentional, who wants to go on the journey of peaceful, intentional, positive parenting. Please underline, underline those words. You have to ensure that your relationship with your children is not about harassment, constant nagging, and it's nothing about you. 
you are teaching them what is good for their lives. But if you don't do stop and check, you might never know. If you are not intentional in checking your life, you might never know. All right. So they will give up when they're trying to please you. So you allow them. One thing, if you're a believer of God, it is very important to allow them to grow their faith, not riding on your faith. And I will try to explain this in a very short uh, second. A lot of us are just allowing our children to grow on our faith. Maybe you are a pastor, a bishop, a deacon, a deaconess, a worker in church, or a born again, a child of God. Because you know God for yourself, and you want your child to know God, you don't know that you have to teach them God and allow them to practice God and to know faith. You are just always putting them on your own faith, and they have no, they have no idea about faith. But you are not aware that they don't know anything about faith. So we have to allow them to grow their own faith. It is very important. You can only teach them this faith and show them how it works. We can teach our children this is faith through the word of God and everything. Now you don't turn it to someone. We can teach them, show them, and show them, let them see how it works. I've said it sometimes back. I use my children when they were much younger as example. I think that should be about last year or a year before. I, was, I set an example about when one of them was playing, accidentally I saw what happened. It's the TV. And I saw the ink splashed. Ah, I said to myself, no, 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 we are not going to buy TV now. What is this? Revora. But I just I stay calm. I always tell you, always remember your calm voice, body, and face, right? I didn't say a word. And they came to me together. When they do something like that, I'm blessed with things in case you don't know. They will come together, team up, and talk. Mommy, we're sorry the TV is damaged and everything. I said, I saw what happened. But you know, guys, we cannot buy any TV now. If you were, if I said it in one of my teachings before. I said to them, you know, we cannot buy any TV now. But I saw the ink. It splashed. I said, you know, we cannot buy any TV now. That is the virus. So what are you going to do? They say, Mommy, we don't know. I said, you have to know. What are you going to do? And I said to them, you have to activate your faith at this moment. Go back to the TV. A lot of you are just extreme. Are you crazy? They always call me crazy. You know why? Because I understand God and I know him for myself. I told my children, go back. What do, you, do, you think, do you believe in prayer? They said they know they believe in prayer. Do you believe miracle can happen? They said, I said, go back and exercise your faith. Go and pray. I saw them. They were there. I was just looking. I did not join them in prayer. You know why? My faith did not even carry that that TV will work. <laughs> even me that asked them to go and pray. My faith did not carry that that TV will work. So I said, I just go. I didn't say anything. I was just calm. I just, I just lay down on the couch and everything. And I saw them. They prayed for about five minutes. And they came to me. They said, Mommy, we are afraid. The TV is going to work now. I said, ah, go back and pray. It's five minutes. They said, no, Mommy. The TV is going to work now. They pushed me. So now they can see, I think, in the spirit. I don't know, that, they, that this Mommy doesn't even have faith. They told me they, they insisted that they show that the TV is working now. I said, okay, go and check. So they used the remote and they on the TV and the TV was working. I was like, in me. I said, oh, you, you never have that belief. I'm saying this so that we know that we teach them faith, not them riding on our faith. We teach the faith and allow them to see how it works. These are the things that can make us... See, a lot of believers, when they have issues with their teenager, it's because they don't know they lack these things. They didn't teach these things. But they were not aware. What you don't know, you don't know. What you don't know, you don't know. You think, follow me to church. Go and dress up his face. No. And the TV worked. So I said to them, you see, I told you that it's fine prayers and everything. What did they do? And they said, okay, we are coming, we are coming. I said, okay, go back. They went back to the TV and started worshiping God and giving God praise. This time they were even much younger. I think this happened about three years ago. So I also learned something in the process. Parenting is a journey. I said it many times. It is not a destination. As we go, we grow with them and we learn on this journey. But we just need to have that vision, which is the map that is guiding us. It's very important. So one of the reasons why you see that they, they, they seems to, your teenager is pushing your faith about. Yes, you start telling them, ah, I'm a pastor. I, I'm, a, I'm a daughter of a pastor, but me, I don't like going to church. They start saying to their friends in class, but you start hearing these things like, what have, where have I, what have, God, where have I missed it? You are not feeling bad, Lord, I did my part. No, you did your part, but you, shouldn't, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. You just walked that path by yourself. You walked the path alone, but you, never, you were never aware. 
So one of the reasons why you're sitting there pushing away the faith of their parents is because they were not taught the faith and they, they didn't see, they were not shown how it works. They were just riding on their parents' faith. So when they get to a point, because they, we, don't forget, we will not always be with them. They will start pushing this faith away and they say, I don't want to go to church today. When they go to body house or they go in their institution, they start to withdraw because they see it as a time to now, I have peace, I'm free now. Because it was a body where you were never aware. You thought to see a vibrant child. Because you take them to church and lead the praise and worship. You think you have le you've led... <laughs> this is not... I did all the, Everything I'm saying, I didn't plan to say today. But I always believe God wants somebody to hear you. That's why I'm going this direction. So they start pushing the faith of their, their parents away because they finally gave up trying to please you. That's why they will push it away because they've been trying to please you. They, they, you ask them to go to choir. They join choir because of you. Because you feel they can sing. You don't ask them, go and pray. What do you want? Go to what, what is God leading you to do? You ask them to join the ushers. They joined. You ask them to do this. They join. They are in the drama unit. They are doing everything for you, but you think you have raised an amazing child that knows God. Huh. We will not fail on our part. We won't fail on our part. We are not a failure. And that is why we call ourselves intentional parents. So they get the time and say, ah, oh, finally, I don't have to please them again. I'm free. You hear people telling you, the devil can attack anybody. We see pastor's children that are failing. So even if you pray or do anything, the devil can attack. No, I'm on a different note. I've heard people that I respect say this severally. See, God is the rewarder of them, of those who diligently seek him. And we, we, we cannot pray and act, do everything he asks us to do. And listen, pay attention to details and we fail us. But many times we are praying, we are not acting appropriately, and most importantly, we are not paying attention to details. Then we say, ah, mm -hmm, I tried my best, but God failed me. God did not fail you. We failed ourselves. And we, we are not going to fail ourselves in Jesus' name. We will fail ourselves in Jesus' name. So we should be mindful of these things and not just put God in a corner like he's a failure. God is never a failure and he's too faithful to fail. So, so you are only imposing your faith. That's what happened. Another example, I will do one more example about faith. Something happened because of the week also. And I will use it as an example. So sometimes one of the things we do to impose our faith, not teaching the faith and seeing and allowing them to see how it works is, for example, your child is running temperature. Of course, it's good to go to the hospital. But do I go to the hospital every time? No. Do I take my children to the hospital every time? No. Have I seen things that are scary? Scary, physically happening. And I didn't call the ambulance before? Yes. I have done that before. Why? Because that's why we need spiritual sensitivity. It's not everything that you call ambulance. Or... I don't know why I'm teaching spiritual things today. This is not part of the plan. But teach them to know the faith. For example, a child is telling you I have a headache. Don't just say, go and pray or go and use anointing oil. No. You are imposing your faith on that child. Something happened because of the week. Another my one of my children came to me and said, This is this, 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 and I said, Okay, do you want to go see a doctor? Or you want to go and use the anointing oil? I gave a, a choice. I gave a choice. These are the these are the ways we can teach them to know faith for themselves. So would you like to, should I take you to the doctor? Do you want to go and see the doctor? Or you want to go and use the anointing oil? I don't know if you use anointing oil in our house. We use. So I'm not teaching you to that's not this message. But try to get to what I'm trying to teach. And she and the child said, uh, no, 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 I don't want to see the doctor. I'll just pray and, and anoint myself. And I said, fine. And she came back after, I'm I'm okay now. I did not impose that on her. No, there is no need for that. So we have to let them. Let them grow in faith and see how it works. Not just growing in faith. We stay back and let them see the practicality of what we have taught them. All right, I've stayed too long on that point. And I don't want to stay long today. Okay, let me take 15 minutes more, then we'll be out of here. All right, I'm going to be talking about keys to improve your relationship with your children. I've spoken about art to art connection, right? Part of art to art connection with them is improving... Having a very nice relationship, cordial relationship, a very warm relationship, an understanding communication relationship, without harassment, without giving them burden, without uh, letting, letting them feel they don't have the right to speak. So where are the ways? Let me talk about few things you can do 
to ensure that you improve your relationship or that, that will of that might, rather. Because one thing that works for one will not work for another. However, try it. There is always a solution around it that will help you improve your relationship with your uh, teenager. And I we're talking about teenager, but these things are applicable to all our children. If you have preteen, if you have children, if, just keep these uh, lessons with you and use them as the time pass by and you will see the result. All right, parents and teenagers need conversation without emotional outburst. You, as a parent, if you have a preteen or a teenager, most especially, when we talk about teenager, you know it's a wide group and I'll be talking about the stages. T 13 is teenager, 19 is teenager. So when we talk about 13, how mature is that 13 years old compared to 19? And don't let me jump my step. I'm talking about conversation, communication without emotional outbursts. This emotional outburst I'm talking about might be from you or the child. So we have to create that relationship that is not every time you're talking. You don't really know that some parents can be the one who is so emotional that when their child is giving them feedback on what they were not pleased about, they are the one that will burst into tears. Ah, how dare you talk to me like that? I've been raising you like this, but the child is genuinely telling you how they feel out of love. But the emotional outburst is coming from you as parents. And sometimes it's going to be coming from the child because you have not really taught emotional intelligence or for them to be matured emotionally. When we talk about emotional intelligence, a lot of people do not understand. And it's not what I can really, I've done a little bit, but I can't teach it on parenting essential. This cost is very expensive. <laughs> so, have a communication, a conversation without emotional outbursts. It might be your weekly meeting. It might be your feedback meeting. Don't just, you're not complaining, but you are bursting into emotions and making that child feel less. Or the child is just bursting into tears and making you like, okay, mommy is not doing well. We need to grow to that level that we can talk, we can actually address the issues that may be on ground without emotional outburst. I can't say more than that. If you need more information, you can message me personally. We see how to work on that. So one of these uh, communication that you have to improve is the vulnerable communication. When you have a vulnerable communication with your children, it means you as a parent, you are processing your thought first before you pass it across to them, which is going to help you if you are so emotional. If you are the parent that is always busting into emotional outburst, you need to practice vulnerable communication. It's going to help you to grow. It's going to help your emotion, your emotion develop. It will help your emotions develop. So we have to be intentional in, on how we create the connections with our teens and children. Be it teens, seniors, whatever they say, they are, young adults. Be intentional on how you want to create the connection. And that is why you have to have a vulnerable uh, communication. Vulnerable communication will make you connect with your, with your own heart first. It means you are checking, processing your words before you say it out. Don't forget there are different human beings. Whatever you say out, you cannot say, you cannot say that's not how I mean it. You cannot mean something and sound differently to a teenager. You have to sound the way you mean. You have to sound the way you mean. Not I don't, I don't really mean like that. That's not what I mean. No, it might not work for them. It might be too late. So that is why you connect with your heart first. You get in touch with your own emotion first, your heart first, before talking to your teenager. You process what you want to say. Is it because of me? This statement is it about me. If you want to correct them about something, take a moment to check. Is this thing really bad? And this is what we do as parents. Is this thing really bad or because you don't like it? You know, we might not like some things personally and we want to impose it on our children. But because we don't like it personally, we're not checking ourselves that our children does not have to like what we like. We become a burden to, their, to them. Because we are not doing vulnerable communication. We are not doing stop and check. We think we are authority and everything. So always check your thought. Check where my thought is coming from. Is it in the place of fear or faith? Hmm. Many of us are parenting in fear, not faith. The love you are professing, that you're saying you love your children, is fear, not faith. There is nothing faith in it. You are just as afraid. You cannot go out. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. 
Of course, am I allowing my children to go out anyhow? No. So don't get it twisted. But what you are saying, because you are so afraid, ah, I cannot allow you. Maybe because of your emotional trauma, childhood trauma, and that is why you have to heal first. You have to develop your childhood. Parent yourself first. Parent the inner child first. The moment you are uh, parenting in the place of fear, it's going to affect our children knowingly to us or knowingly. I want to stop. We are going to affect them. So we have to be able to see it. Fear or love? Is this in the place of fear or because I really love my child? Is it, am I doing this because this is the right thing I should do as an intentional parent or because I'm so afraid? So you have to challenge your fears if it is fears. Challenge them. And that is why I talk sometimes about reasonable risks. We have to allow them to take reasonable risks. That's why we say we cannot go on this journey if you are a believer without the Holy Spirit. It is um, it's impossible, never. Because it's the Holy Spirit that we tell you, it's okay to go now. Everything is fine. And you also teach them to know God for themselves. You teach them to be able to listen to that inner person speaking to them. So you have to deal, challenge your fears. Address the trigger before talking to your teens. What are the things that trigger you? Is it the way they dress? Is it the way, they, what is it that just triggers you about your children? That you feel they are not listening now. This is what you said. That's what I want. And that's why now. I heard that statement growing up. This is what I want. Ah, my dad of blessed memory. Oh my God. I, I can say I, I was my dad's best friend, but we are the two uh, uh, fighting, fighting every time in that. You understand? Because I, I remember telling my dad severally, Adi, let's sit down and talk. Let's bring out the scripture. Come, let's talk. But I'm happy that he was able to finally get the point. And okay, this child knows what she's doing. Let me leave her. That's my daughter. She understands God. She knows God for herself. Because if not, in my house, this is it. This is, of course, we have values. And we have to teach our children our values. But let your value not just be about you. Let it be what is important to their lives. I just hope I'm making sense. Engineer, I cited there. Bad Maria Abiola, thank you so much for joining, bro. God bless you. God Almighty, we give you wisdom as parents in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everybody, everybody, God is going to give us wisdom. We need wisdom, especially from God with the help of the Holy Spirit. All right. So we have to always address our own triggers. You have to process your own emotion first. Is this all about me? Is it just because of this? Is it just because of that? I've said a lot of things. I don't want to repeat them. So you have to ensure that you filter fear out of your actions. Your child is telling you, mommy, I really want to go and study law. Or I really want to go and do military work. Because something happened, maybe to your uncle or some family members, and they lost their life or something happened. And you ever you said, never will I allow my child to be a soldier or something. That is fear already. Is it that I don't understand how you fear? I understand. But, you know, sometimes we have to calm down and pray and just get rid of this fear. Oh, you don't understand. It was a terrible moment for the family. I do understand. But we cannot, because of what happened in the past, to affect the future. What is the child hearing from God? Is that what God wants the child to do? As a parent, a spiritual parent, a sensible and sensitive one, did you pray? Did God say no? So we have to ensure that we filter fear. You see, there is a thin line between fear and love. If you are not careful, you will not know. You just say, I'm doing this because I love you. I'm doing this, and it's just fear. And you don't even know that you are afraid. You know why? Because you are not doing your personal check. You don't know that you are so afraid. A lot of people are afraid. Be man of God. Women of God. They are so afraid. They don't know how much their mental state is. But they believe it's love. Faith, no. It's just fear. Fear, fear. All right, challenge your triggers before talking to your teenagers. Teenagers, the truth about them is they want to be sane. They want to feel like we are on the same page. Yes, mommy is getting me. They want to be sane. I've said that it's important for, you to, for them to be sane, heard, and feel valued. And that's what creates the art to art connection. So, so you have to you have to make sure that they're being seen by their adults in the context of a meaningful relationship. 
We have to have a meaningful relationship with our children. Mommy, can I speak to you? Daddy, can I speak to you? And they tell you, you know, this happened to me. Or, you know, you did this and I was not happy about it without you being, you know, thinking about trigger or emotional outburst or feeling your child is rude now. So you have to create that kind of relationship with your child. They need the gift of being seen. Give it to them, parent. Teenagers, preteen, they need the gift of being seen. They are not rude. You change your mindset first. Parent the inner child first. Because everything is rude to you because you were raised like that. The child is asking a genuine question, giving a genuine feedback, but you feel it's an insult. Because you have not reparent yourself. You have to reparent yourself. Those things that you said to your aunties, your parents when you were young, and they shun you up and tell you that you are rude. You were not rude, but they didn't know better. So don't push it on to the next generation. Please. So be intentional about creating this. Somebody is limping and they can see it. And they ask you, maybe it's their grandma. Mom or dad, why is grandma limping? I said it in my, one of my old videos. I used this example about four years ago. And I said, the child will say, why is grandma, grandma or grandpa limping? The next thing that comes to your mind is, this is very insulting. What sort of question is that? Shut up, don't say that. You don't say adult limp. Uh -uh. It's just a question. The child is not saying adult limp, but the adult is actually limping. It is not an insult. We need to reparent ourselves. Let's turn our brain. Help yourself so that you can help your child. If you don't help yourself, this day, next generation will suffer. The child is not insulting the, your, gra your mom, which is their grandma, or your dad, which is their grandpa. They are sincerely asking a genuine question. If you know why, your job is to tell the child, oh, grandma limps because she had an accident while she was a child, or she was born like that, and it's good to be unique. She's beautiful and just wonderfully made. Oh, 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 I see, I see. Oh, that's true. She's beautiful. We are all unique. We teach a lesson. We don't insult the child. The child has the right to ask. But because we've been taught over the time that anytime we ask a similar question, it's rude. No. It's insultive. No. If you are still feeling like that, please reparent yourself. Heal the inner child. Any questions so far? Facebook, Instagram? Any question? You have to heal the inner child. I didn't cover what I want to cover today, but it's okay. Next week is another time. So we need to give them the gift of being seen. We need to give them the gift of our attention. Undivided attention. They want to talk, but you are too busy. And some of these reasons why some of us are busy. Eh? We really need to slap ourselves. Unnecessary things. Chatting with friends. Oh, I'm there. Something that is not even valid. Not even because you want to go and work and you are so busy with your duties. Which is not even a reason why you should not give your child attention. So please give them that attention if they seek it. The moment, especially your team, are seeking for your attention as parent or caregiver, and you are unable to give it, they will search for it. But most of the time, the result of them searching for this attention elsewhere is always terrible. So don't ever let that happen. If they go search for this attention by themselves, the result is always, most of the time, terrible. Except messy speak and they fall into right hands. If they don't have anybody to speak to. Mr. Google is the Google. My mommy is this. What should I do? First thing, you think that answer is not there? Uh, people have answered the questions. So let's be careful. Let's be careful. The greatest, you know, they don't want to be invisible. And this is one of their greatest fear. They don't want to be invincible. Please. Do your best as parent. Any questions so far? I want to round up. Teenagers and parents need empathy and compassion from each other. I've, talk, I've spoken about empathy a lot of times. You can't just talk to them as if they are nothing. If you treat them like nonsense, like you don't show them concern, if they are truly sharing their pain, maybe academically they're struggling and they're feeling like, Mommy, this is nonsense. It's not time to cry. Go and carry your book. We have to show empathy and give them support along their struggle. You see a lot of adults today. Why do we see people struggling? I always bring this back to marriage because I'm also a married counselor. Why do we see people struggling? Because the way they were raised has affected their life. You see a, a man looking at the wife crying and he don't feel moved. Why are you crying? What nonsense? Because I just said little things. What's your child though? You, can't, you are not even allowed to talk to your child like that. You're talking to your wife or your husband like that. That person is in the state of being sick. Mental health upside down. 
But they are not aware because if you are, we raise the shoulder, shoulders, uh, shoulders, uh, soldiers, we are raising soldiers. Soldiers. You don't have to cry. There's no empathy. There's no feeling. There is no, there's no emotional intelligence. Their child is crying, nothing. Their wife is crying, complaining. Their husband is crying. It's not their business. You cannot raise the next generation like that. And God is asking you, are you doing the job he has given to you? Those children, I call them growing glory for a purpose. There are reasons why the Lord gave me that word for them. They are growing glory. And we must not quench this glory God has given to us. And we are accountable on them. So let me stop here. Let me stop here. Do you have any question? Oh. I was supposed to still talk about the strategies. For, for, okay. I'll see if I can continue next week. Uh, finish next week. If not, we have all the time. There's no need to rush. Any question on Instagram, Facebook, any question? Are you there? Is there? Just say hello if you've been here and you have gained something today. Can I just see you say hello if you've been with me and you have gained something today? Can you just drop your point quickly? One point. If you don't have any question, what is that thing that you want to go home with today that you don't want to forget? Only you said it today, even though I know before, but I want to keep it with me. Anybody there? That is making me to know that we are together and I'm not just talking. Sister Ram, you see, I sight you there. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Good to see you. How is the family? Uh oh. It's good to see Sister Ram, you see you. Sister Ram, you see, is my old, old friend from school way back. God bless you. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Obey. Did you learn something for your future wife and children? Obey. What did you learn today? What are you going to take home? Mommy Pat, you are still there. Oh, my darling mommy. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Well done, sis. Give your team full attention. Absolutely. Thank you, sis. Mm -hmm. I love you and I love you all. And that is, that word cannot be overemphasized. We have to give them the full, undivided attention. Don't forget this. If you don't give them, they will search for it. And most of the time, when they do this searching of attention by themselves, the end result is disaster. No matter how busy your schedule is, no matter how busy your schedule, everything is never, never, ever cease, uh, uh, deny them of this attention. No matter what it takes. No matter what it takes. Ah, sir, Mr. Lawrence, I cite you there, sir. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. Uncle Jojo, thank you for joining me. Our kids are growing, glory, absolutely. And I'm so glad everyone followed and they were able to drop a point. And I want to say thank you to everybody for joining me. I'm teaching uh, on teenagers. Whatever I'm teaching is applicable to preteen and all our children in general, even the young adults. So whatever the case, they are, still con they are going to continue to learn from us. I started this series last week. So if you're here today and you gained something, and you want to see the way I introduced the topic, just go ahead and watch the video from last week. And I think this is going to take us the next two weeks also. So it doesn't matter if you are raising a teenager now, or you have a child, an infant, or you are still waiting, or you are still single. Whatever knowledge you have now is going to prepare you for the future. And no knowledge is never a waste. So I want to say thank you, everybody, for joining me. Learn to be the kids. The kids learn. learn. Demonstrate their own faith. Yes. Thank you, Dickiness. Yes, allow them to demonstrate their own faith, not just pushing because you are a Dickiness, you are a pastor. I can't but say it. I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. Growing up, I saw a lot. I saw a lot. Especially when you are, ah, your daddy is an elder in church. Your daddy is this. Are you going to love God because your daddy is an elder in church? Are you still raising your children to go to church and do choir, chorus, and because you are a pastor? Or because it is good for them to know God for themselves? It is good for your child to have personal relationship with God. That is going to help them to pass the test of time. We will not always be there with them. And the world that we are in now, this generation with technology, we have not seen nothing yet. All right, I want to say thank you once again to everyone who is joining me. Uncle Obey, thank you for joining. Special shout out to Mommy Pat, to me of the Full Gospel Sanctuary. She's one of my mentors, and I'm glad she's here today. You can follow our page on Let's Talk About to See. Bear me what? I don't know where mommy gets that energy from. Every day, she's dishing out the word. I'm only live on Saturday. And I'm like, oh, sometimes I feel like I want to rest. She's dishing out the word every day. So if you have, you have not followed that page, please do follow. Let's talk about it by Pat Oluo Tini. All right, and I'm promising you you're going to be blessed. It's not going to be a waste of time for you. So thank you to everybody who's joining me here. Uncle Jojo, Mr. Lawrence, and the team. Mm -hmm. 
Everybody who is there, Sister Yemisi, if you are still there, Engineer Bami Imore, thank you if you are there. God bless you, everyone. And everyone who I cannot see on my screen, if you're seeing me for the first time, this little girl right here is called Oye Lyo. But you can just call me Oye for short. And I am your parenting coach. And this is called the Parenting Essential. It's coming to you from the Vision Guide. If you have not followed Vision Guide, please follow Vision Guide. I don't, I don't know, always go live on Vision Guide, but I will still try again one of these days. So please follow Vision Guide and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. So I'm planning to be dropping some things there now. I need to go now. The battery is low. God bless you. Love you. Love you. Mm -mm -mm. God bless you. I'll see you again. The battery is so low. God bless you. I love you. Instagram family. God bless you. Kali, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Let me see money. I saw you there. God bless you. God bless you. Facebook. Love you. Love you.